Thank you for purchasing the Milescraft Sign Pro. Before we get started, let's take a moment to ensure that all of the components necessary to use the Sign Pro are present and in good condition. If you find something missing or broken, please contact Milescraft immediately so we can remedy the problem. We first get started by inserting the included turn lock base plate centering pin into the router's collet. Depending on the size of your specific router's collet, you can use either the quarter inch diameter end or the half inch diameter end. Once the centering pin is in position, secure it tightly in place as recommended by the router's manufacturer. Next, with the 5 8 inch bushing attached to the turn lock base plate included with the Sign Pro, slide the base plate over the centering pin and all the way down to allow the cone shaped middle of the centering pin to align the base plate perfectly centered on your router's base. With the turn lock base plate centered and flush on the router's base, turn it until it aligns with the appropriate pre-drilled holes with those found on the base of your router. If necessary, based on the size of your router manufacturer's base, use the elongated screws supplied with the Sign Pro to properly secure the turn lock base tightly to your router. Now that the turn lock base plate is properly centered and installed, you can remove the centering pin by first removing the 5 8 inch turn lock bushing and loosening the router's collet. You'll find each Sign Pro comes complete with two sets of templates, a full set of horizontal letters and numbers in both 2.5 inch and 1.5 inch dimensions. The Sign Pro also comes with both a 5 8 inch and 7 16 inch diameter turn lock bushing and two long reach router bits in 3 8 inch and quarter inch diameters to allow you to make a wide variety of projects. Both sizes of router bits can be used with either set of templates, but it's important to only use the 3 8 inch diameter router bit with the larger 5 8 inch bushing. When installing the router bits, please follow the router manufacturer's recommendations. Insert the bit all the way into the collet, then lift it slightly. So when you tighten the collet's collar, the bit is not resting on the base of the collet. With the bit installed, reattach the 5 8 inch turn lock bushing onto the turn lock base plate and then take the time to double check that the router bit is properly centered before using. If necessary, you may need to readjust the bit or the turn lock base plate to ensure it will work appropriately. Assembling the templates couldn't be any easier. Simply select the appropriate size templates that work best for your project and spell out the word. For example, Paris. You can also mix both the 2.5 inch and 1.5 inch templates within the same sign to create even more options. The assembly's frame takes only moments to put together. Start by inserting one end of the rail into the appropriate slot of the end frame, tighten it securely in place, and then repeat this on the opposite end. Once both rails have been properly secured, you can begin sliding the templates into position. This particular assembly works best for signs under 18 inches. And there's never any need to worry about uneven spacing between letters or numbers as the design of the templates ensures they'll be evenly spaced and look great when the project is completed. If you find there aren't enough characters in your sign to reach all the way to the end, simply add a few extra templates as placeholders. For best results, the extra filler templates should be evenly added at the beginning and end of the sign. An easy way to determine if your sign will need extra filler templates is to use the rails as a guide while choosing your templates. If you find there's extra room for more templates, choose the necessary amount from the unused templates and experiment until you find the best ones to fill in the gaps. Another good practice when using the extra filler templates is to turn them upside down or backwards to make it more obvious they're not part of the custom sign you'll be creating. Now that everything's in place, attach the other end frame and tighten the set screws. To lock all the templates tightly in position, Loosen the screw on the adjustable spacer on the end frame and slide it forward until it braces against the last template. Then retighten the screw. A quick tip to help ensure the templates are locked tightly in place is to lift the entire assembly up and hold it upright to see if anything moves or comes loose. If it does, a quick readjustment is all that's needed to be made before we move on. For assembling signs 18 to 36 inches in length, the setup is exactly the same as before, but of course with just an extra step or two. Begin again by laying out the desired templates and sliding them into position. As we get about halfway down the first set of rails, it's a good idea to add a support bridge to help hold the longer assembly together. Now as we reach the end of the first set of rails, we need to attach the rail joiner. Slide the rail joiner onto the ends of the rails 
and then tighten the first set of screws. Then insert the next set of rails and tighten the second set of screws. Now continue to add the remaining templates and also a second support bridge to complete the sign. With all the templates added, it's time to attach the other end frame. Again, tighten the set screws to secure the rails and then adjust the adjustable spacer to hold everything tightly in place. With our assembly complete, it's time to start thinking about routing our project. But first, let's look at ways we'll secure the assembly to our project material. Start by positioning the Sign Pro frame onto the desired location on your material. The design of the end frames and the included C-clamps ensure a low profile that won't interfere with your router's handles. If necessary, for long assemblies, add a third clamp to hold it tight to the surface of the material. Other methods of securing the assembly to your project include driving screws through the pre-drilled holes on the end frames, or applying a piece of double-sided tape to the bottom. Now we're ready. We start by securing the assembly to the project material in the desired location, and if you're using the C-clamps, remember to butt them tightly against the end frames for even more clamping power and stability. To set the depth of cut for your router bit, place the router on the assembly and lower the router bit until it's flush with the surface of the side material. Set your depth stop adjustment for the desired depth of cut. Then remove the router from the assembly and adjust to the desired depth. A quick note about setting the bit for the desired depth of cut. When working with softwoods, it's possible in many situations to plunge the bit to the final depth in a single pass. But with most hardwoods, you'll get better and safer results by taking several shallow passes and progressively working your way down to the final depth. Before starting your sign, we recommend using a test piece first to double check your setup. With the router bit set at the desired depth of cut, we begin with the bushing snug against the inside edge of the template. Plunge the router down and run the bushing tight against the template, moving in a clockwise motion to help ensure the greatest amount of control. Once you've completed routing the first template, turn the motor off, raise the router carefully, and then move on to the next template. Repeat this series of actions with each template until you've completed the project. It's important to remember to take your time and keep a steady rate of feed into the cut. It's easy to see, after only a couple of passes, the great results you're getting right away. Too fast or too slow, and you risk the chance of imperfections in the letters or numbers lines. To add a little variety to your projects, try varying the depth of cut, or try a different router bit profile. Just keep in mind the bit will need to easily fit within the interior walls of either the 5 8 inch or 7 16 inch turn lock bushing. Once you've reached the end, turn off the router, set it aside, and now remove the clamps. The end result is a beautifully routed custom sign friends and family will love. You can decorate your sign in so many ways. Here for example, we've painted the lettering and rounded over the border to make it stand out and really show off your efforts. In fact, here's a few more ideas. Included in every Sign Pro kit are vertical number templates also. Here we're using them for a completely different effect from what we just saw. This makes adding a personalized address to your mailbox post easier than ever before. And with this look, visitors can no longer claim they can't read your address from the street anymore.